Hi again, Sandy Jassy. Um, great to be with your, you here today. You can see I'm out of my more casual attire when I got to Vegas and now I'm wearing the jacket. Um, it's, it's Tuesday here, reInvent, and uh, I had the privilege to be able to um, be back with the whole crew today and have a chance to do a, a short segment in Matt's keynote. Matt did an awesome job, but it was just, it was thrilled to be back up on stage with everybody. So, I, you know, we announced so many things today. I can't get through all of them, and you, you probably don't want to sit through another uh, conversation about all the launches, but I, I thought what I would do today and then for the next couple of days is just give you some of the launches that I'm excited about. And I'm going to talk about three today. The first I'm going to talk about is in the database space. And so if you've looked at what's happened to databases over the last 10 years, they, we went from assuming that there was really just one tool to rule the world, one database, to realizing that there's lots of relational database opportunities and, and, and options and lots of non-relational database options. And we built something almost about 10 years ago that was a cloud native database. And what it has is it's got the performance of the highest grade enterprise database uh, opportunities and options out there, while at the same time being a fraction of the cost and fully SQL compatible. And so this is something we call Amazon Aurora, which has grown really, really quickly. And what's happened over time is that because we've had so many customers enjoying Aurora and getting so much value from it, we keep building features. And among the features that we've built that have been most successful is providing a serverless option for Aurora. That means that the database just scales as you actually use it. And so what we found over time is as the world was, was employing more and more complicated and sophisticated applications, they, they had end users all over the globe. And so what they, and this was pushing the limits, by the way, of most relational databases. So what they really wanted was they wanted a multi-region database that was also low latency, that was high availability, that had strong consist consistency, that had zero operational bur burden, and oh, by the way, was SQL compatible. And just, just a few of those things. But they wanted all. And what you found is that there are a couple of these multi-region database options today, but they either have low latency and high availability, but they don't have strong consistency or SQL compatibility, or they have high availability and strong consistency, but they don't have low latency or SQL compatibility. And so you're having to make these OR choices. And we talk about this a lot inside Amazon, which is the tyranny of the OR. You don't want to have to make OR choices because it means that you have to give up on some of the customer capabilities you want to provide. So we worked hard at this and we launched today something called Aurora DSQL. And so this is a new flavor of Aurora. It's a distributed database. It's multi-region. It's very low latency. It's high availability, strong consistency. It has um, zero operational burden because it's all serverless, like the serverless Aurora people are loving, and it's SQL compatible. So people are very excited about this. I think it's gonna be a huge change for what people can do. People ask us about this, oh, well, how will it compare to something like Spanner? Apart from just having better SQL compatibility, when you benchmark it, because the hard part of these distributed databases is the latency, D, uh, Aurora DSQL has four times lower latency than Spanner. So I think people are gonna love this. So that's the first one I was gonna talk about. The second is really around chips. And so one of the big lessons that we've learned from having about a thousand generative AI applications we're either in the process of building or have launched at Amazon, is that the cost of compute in these generative AI applications really matters. It's often the difference maker of whether you can do it or you can't. And to date, all of us have used really just one chip in the compute for generative AI, and people are hungry for better price performance. And so the launch of Match Shared today of Tranium 2, which is our new chip that we built, which are in our Tranium 2 instances in EC2, or TRN2 as we call them, is going to be a game changer. It has 
30 to 40 percent better price performance than the um, current GPU instances in EC2. Think about that. 30 to 40 percent better price performance is a big deal when you're doing generative AI at scale. And so what we've done in, in each of these TRN2 instances is you've got 16 of these TR tra these Tranium 2 chips in there. It allows you to run uh, 20.8 petaflops of compute at its peak performance, which is quite a lot. And then we built an additional innovation that we call um, ultra servers, which basically what we've done is we've done we've taken four Tranium TRN2 servers and put them together through ultra fast Neuralink Connect. So that means that you effectively have 64 Tranium 2 chips in this one um, uh, ultra server, and that gives you a I think the math is 83.2 petaflops of compute um, at peak performance. It's completely different in terms of what you can do. You're going to use those ultra servers and, and a cluster of those to train the most sophisticated, largest foundation models in the world. In fact, we just announced a collaboration with Anthropic where they're going to build their next generation of large language models on top of Tranium 2, but on an ultra cluster of hundreds of thousands of Tranium 2 chips. So this is very exciting and I think this is going to make a big difference for you as you start to scale your compute in generative AI. And then the third one I'm going to uh, mention is really around models. And so what's interesting in those thousand uh, internal generative AI applications is that a lot of our internal builders have asked us to provide them better latency, lower cost, um, the ability to fine tune their models, the ability to connect knowledge bases so they can ground their answers in their own data, the ability to take agentic actions on their behalf. And so we we have a lot of model provider, providers that, that are partners, and, and they, they have been partners for a while and will be partners for a while, um, for a long time, as far as I can see. And when we mention this feedback, they're very receptive to it, but at the same time, they're busy. And so it's one of the reasons why we have continued to work on our own frontier models. And we've made tremendous progress on these models the last four or five months. And we figured if we found them useful, that our customers would find them useful as well. And so today we launch our own frontier models that we call Amazon Nova. And we launched several flavors of it. So on the intelligence models, we have four flavors. We have a text-only model called Micro, which you input text, you get back text. It's laser fast, it's very cost effective, and it's, it's great for a lot of the simple tasks our internal builders are using. And then we have three flavors of multimodal models, which means you can input text, images, or video, and you get back text. And so each of them in ascending order of size and intelligence. And if you look at the benchmarks, they benchmark very competitively. They're, they're, they're really compelling models, but there are some things about them that I think you're gonna love. First of all, they're very cost effective. They're 75% less expensive than the other leading models in Bedrock. They are laser fast. They're the fastest models you're gonna find there. They, they all the Nova models allow you to do fine tuning and increasingly our application builders for generative AI wanna fine tune the models with their own labeled data and examples. It allows you to do model distillation, which means take a big model and infuse that intelligence in a smaller model so that you get lower latency and lower cost. It's well integrated with your knowledge bases in Bedrock, so you can ground that data and there your answers with your own data. And then it gives you the ability to connect with your proprietary systems and APIs so that we can do orchestration of several automated actions for you, or what people often call agentic behavior. So I think these models are gonna be very compelling for you. We also launched an image generation model called Nova Canvas and a video generation model called um, Nova Real, which both also benchmark very well and will let you create image and video much more easily. So. I'm very excited about these capabilities. These are some of my favorite launches of today. I wanted to talk about some of the things in Bedrock. I wanted to talk about some of the things in Q. I wanted to talk about some of the, 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 the things that we're launching in SageMaker. But the good news is that we actually have a number of launches coming in each of those areas in the next couple of days, and I'll talk about those in a future day. Thank you.